over Jeff Fisher's St. Louis Rams. 49 degrees and sunny here in the Pacific Northwest. Pete Carroll's Seahawks at 7-1, 11 consecutive home victories over the last two seasons. On the other side, Greg Schiano's Bucks at 0-7. Buccaneers won the toss. They defer. So the Seahawks will start at their own 20-yard line, led out onto the field by Russell Wilson, who has never lost as a starting quarterback here in Seattle. And I really agree with what Tony said. Russell Wilson really is a perfectionist. He doesn't leave any stone unturned. Anything he can do to make himself better, he will embrace that. He doesn't care what people are going to say about his approach. He is all about being the leader of this offense and taking this team to the next level. Marshawn Lynch only eight carries Monday night in St. Louis. In the backfield, two tight end set. On first and ten from the 20-yard line, this is Lynch. And Lynch gains five out to the 25-yard line as we check out the Seahawks' offense. Well, some struggles for the offense this season really because of the injuries here in the offensive line. Paul McQuiston, the starter at left tackle. Michael Bowie, the starter at right tackle. You've got Russell Okun. Breno Giocamini that are out of the lineup, and that has really impacted a lot of things. We saw the effect against the St. Louis Rams last Monday night with all that edge pressure on Russell, Russell Wilson. Sidney Rice placed on injured reserve this week. On second and five, the toss to Lynch, and Marshawn Lynch picks up a Seahawks first down, finally forced out of bounds by Mark Barron. Lynch gains 13. And really the big talk about Tampa Bay's defense this week has been Darrell Revis. You know, how come we're using him in zone comes out? He really hasn't been physically able to play the amount of man-to-man -man coverage that he would like. The last time they played against the Carolina Panthers, he followed Steve Smith in that lockdown fashion that we know him from for the Jets. We'll see how he does this afternoon. Bucks once again without Deshaun Goldson, so Keith Tandy starts at free safety. Wilson looking to throw for the first time. He's wrapped up. Down he goes. Lynch out to the 38-yard line, so no gain on the play. And we see take our first look at Darrell Rebus on the outside. Some soft coverage there in that zone. But really, the, the big issue here is you come out and you start the game with two effective runs to Marshawn Lynch. As soon as you drop back the pass, you got a sack. Well, Wilson wrapped up by McCoy. I'm going to get rid of the ball in the last instant to Lynch. Now second and ten. From the 38-yard line. This time it's Lynch who found a big hole and works his way into Tampa Bay Buccaneers territory. Lynch gaining 13. As we mentioned, only eight carries in the game Monday night against St. Louis. Off to a strong start today. Yeah, only eight carries, and, and also down by the goal line, didn't get his number called. And this is what Marshawn Lynch does for you. He is the physical presence on this offense, but you've got to establish that. He's not the type of player, unless you give him the ball, that can invigorate this offense with that physical stop. Lynch to the sidelines. Robert Turbin in the backfield as Wilson, under pressure, throws it away, looking for the tight end, Zach Miller. You know, looking at Marshawn Lynch, Daryl, this kind of runner that he is, one thing that this Tampa defense needs to do is gang tackle because the hidden yardage for him, you know, when the first defender touches him, how much yardage he gets after that is just incredible. He just runs through arm tackles. So I think, really, th this Buccaneers team has to go and run to the ball and gang tackle a guy like that to slow him down. You're not going to stop him, but you could slow him down. Turbin remains in the game for Lynch on second down. Wilson moving to his right, directing traffic. And is forced out of bounds by Levante David after a short gain, gain of one. So it will be third down and nine for the Seahawks. And this is something that the Tampa Bay defensive line is going to have to guard against. When you loop inside, you have to get back outside. Your inside guy has to get back outside and establish contain. Derek Landry, number 90, cannot allow Russell Wilson to get outside him with that twist. He has to understand his re responsibility now is to make sure that Russell Wilson stays in that pocket. Yep. 
Seahawks must get to the 38 for a first down. Wilson, quick release, and the pass is caught by the tight end, Miller. He leans forward, picks up 10, and the Seahawks able to move the chains. That's what I think we're going to see mixed in to this offensive approach. When you talk about the passing game, quick passes, slants, things that get off the uh, hand of Russell Wilson as quickly as possible. Marshawn Lynch checks back in. Eighth play of the drive for the Seahawks. Well, the Buccaneers, 37. Lynch. Lynch to the Bucks. 26-yard line. Gain of 11, another Seattle first down. And it's going to show you the commitment that they have to the running game this afternoon when you see this. Look at all the people here in the box. Now, you got nine. You got nine in there. Now, a lot of teams are just going to audible out of that. Hey, let's go to a passing play. Not when you've got Marshawn Lynch in this style of a game. Continue to run him into those box counts that maybe don't favor the run because, as Tony said, he's very tough to bring down. Lynch out, Turbin back in. This is Turbin. Turbin to the 22-yard line. Gain of four, second year back out of Utah State. So Lynch off to a terrific start with 43 yards on four carries. And now Turbin in the game once again, gains three. A good, a good guy to be able to turn that running game over to when Marshawn Lynch needs a little bit of a break. Greg Seattle's Bucks, 7-9 last year, looking for their first victory here in 2013. Back it down at 7 as Wilson's pass is caught. Taken down to the 21-yard line for a gain of 2 by Doug Baldwin. We mentioned Seattle without Sidney Rice, placed on injured reserve this week, so we'll see a lot of Baldwin and Cardo Lockett is brought up from the practice squad. There's Golden Tate, Seahawks leading receiver this season for two touchdowns on Monday. Empty backfield. We're down at five. And Wilson's pass is picked off by Mark Barron. So the Seahawks turn the ball over on their first possession today. It's the second interception of the season for the former first round pick out of Alabama, Mark Barron. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Listen to this crowd with the Seahawks' defense on the field for the first time. Yeah, big interception by Mark Barron, but you're backed up. The loudest part of this field is going to be when you're backed up in your own end. Mike Glennon hands off to Mike James. A couple of rookies, Glennon and James. And James, sixth-round pick out of Miami. Filling in for the injured Doug Martin. Picks up five. On first down, Mike Glennon, three years with Russell Wilson at North Carolina State, his fifth start. And you mentioned, Darrell, he's thrown more passes than any other quarterback in history over his first four games. And they've got to change up that game plan this afternoon if they're going to have a chance to knock off Seattle. Second and five, it's James. James takes it out to the 28-yard line, so a third down and one coming up. The offensive line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Davin Joseph, starting to get back after that injury last season. Javon Meredith, the fifth starter at left guard, so that's going to throw some continuity out on the offensive line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Third down and one for the Bucks. With Gabe Karimi in as an extra blocker, this is James. 
And James quiets the crowd, picks up a Tampa Bay first down. Seahawks ranked second defensively. They allow only 15 and a half points per game. This is a very impressive defense. And like I said, the front is very physical, but the back end, the secondary, maybe even more physical. And today, I think the key for the Legion of Boom, not so much Richard Sherman and Brandon Brown are at the corners, but Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas in run support. We've seen the Bucks come out and really commit to that running game on this opening drive. And they definitely complement each other up front and back side. Movement prior to the snap as Glennon throws. Pass intended for Vincent Jackson. He took a hard hit from Cam Chancellor. Mike Carey, our referee today. Offside, defense number 79, five-yard penalty. So first time. That's on Red Bryant. Time for a game break. Joel Clack, Joel. All right, thanks, Kenny. We go to Dallas. The Cowboys gave up a fourth quarter lead, and then Romo marches them down the field. Under a minute left, Dwayne Harris, seven-yard TD, and they win it 27-23. Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Joel. Cowboys suffered a heartbreak defeat to the Lions last week and win a game late against the Vikings today. Another flag pass intended for Sky Dawson. Well, the officials setting the tone early on how they're going to call pass interference against the secondary of the Seahawks. Pass interference. Defense number 39, batting the jersey, one ball is in the air. Anything that impedes the progress the of the Defense receiver. Defense number 39, while the pass is in the air, grabbing the jersey. From the spot of the foul, automatic. First down. And we had an opportunity to talk to Mike Carey before the game because I think that's the biggest question when you play Seattle. How are you going to call pass interference? Anything that impedes the progress, you have to play the ball when it's in the air with every part of your body. You just can't turn your head around and locate it and have contact. So penalties on consecutive plays committed by the Seattle defense. Once again, the Bucs sent in Karimi as an extra blocker, the former Chicago Bear. And James takes it out to the 46-yard line. For a gain of three. Yeah, this, this is a very, very physical secondary. There's going to be a lot of hand checking, especially in those first five yards. They play a, play a lot of press coverage, so that that kind of brings in that physical style. Richard Sherman, Brandon Brown, both of these guys, big physical guys at the line of scrimmage, but they carry that mentality down the field as well. Yeah, they definitely push the envelope, and they want to know what the referees are going to be calling early in the game, so they're going to push even more to find out what they're going to get called against them. the play fake. Glenn hit. Down he goes. Back at the 30-yard line. Bobby Wagner. I tell you, there's nothing more unnerving for an offense than to have a free blitzer really early in the game. Bobby Wagner from the linebacker spot. That should be an easy pickup. You've got three backs in the backfield, and nobody accounts for Bobby Wagner, and he is right to your quarterback. That's a great tackle by you right there by Wagner. His first sack this season, loss of 11. Third down on 18. Lennon checks it down. This is Brian Leonard. And Leonard is knocked out of bounds well shy of a first. So the Bucks unable to capitalize on the Mark Barron interception, will send out the punting unit. But a couple of first downs, one on their own, some with the help of, Saint, of Seattle with their penalties, but you're going to flip field position again. So an effective drive, and that's one of the things that was, was told to Mike Lennon. Listen, being able to move the football and punt the ball and change field position is a successful drive against this team. Well snap, Michael oh. Keenan. Punting from his own 32-yard line. Golden Tate left to go, bounces into the end zone for a touchback. No score here in Seattle. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks offense coming out. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And he left.
11 play drive for the Seahawks to start the game, but then Russell Wilson picked off for the first time in the last four games, only the fifth time this season. Hey, five, two. Marshawn Lynch, 43 hey, yards hey, hey, hey. on the ground during that first run, run, Seattle run, run, possession. Run, First and 10 from the 20. Wilson over the middle looking for the tight end Miller, and there is a flag. Yeah, helmet to helmet to Russell Wilson. Late, you gotta, gotta stay low. You can't do that to a quarterback, and you gotta know that. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 52 from the previous spot, 15 yards. Automatic. First down. Jonathan Casillas. You'll see him flash in here right, right up the middle. Watch helmet to helmet. I mean, he's got to stay low. One thing he should have done was put his hands up. Maybe he could have blocked that ball. But, uh, once he releases that, no more helmet to helmet. It's a good call by the official. 15-yard penalty. Turbin in the backfield. From the 35-yard line, this is Turbin. Turbin gaining five. Out to the 40, Akeem Spence the tackle. Can you mention that drive, 11 plays, but it ends with the interception down near the red zone. It's going to be Zach Miller at the tight end spot. The ball's thrown behind him. You're going to see the impact of the pass rush. What Tony talked about, getting in the throwing lane. Adrian Claiborne coming in. Russell Wilson's got to kind of step down and throw that sidearm. That's going to affect his accuracy on that throw. <laughs> Second down and five. Here's Turbin. Dante David bursting through. Made the first contact. You know, this defensive line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are doing a great job of staying on their feet. That offense is trying to come out, cut blocks. They're doing a great job of getting their hands on guys and staying on. That's why they're going and not allowing that cutback lane. And doing a pretty good job against the run right now. We've not seen Marshawn Lynch during this series. There he is. On the sidelines. Getting some Skittles. He needed some Skittles, Kenny. Most guys go to the sideline and get a little bit of ice. He goes to the sidelines and gets some Skittles. Right. We are told that it's a knee issue. His return today is probable as Turbin is stopped short. Mark Barron, who had the interception on the first series, comes up to make the tackle. And this is just knowing where you are on the field to play and how critical it is to convert and sustain the drive. Robert Turbin has to do a better job of really getting aggressive as he gets to the sideline to get to that flag. John Ryan punching for the first time. Their catch is called for by Sky Dawson. Who's the football? And Dawson able to recover at the bottom of the pile. Good hustle, good work. Thought he had it, and then I thought he lost it, and then he got it back. The last week, Eric Page of the Bucks bubbled a fair catch attempt. So they sent Dawson back. Same thing. Dawson recovers. Today's game is sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost, fuel economy, and a whole lot more. By KFC, the official sponsor of Couch Gating. KFC plus football equals Couch Gating. And by Call of Duty Ghosts. Available November 5th. Rated mature. Space Needle here in Seattle. Seahawks and Bucks are scoreless. Robert Turbin chatting with Marshawn Lynch. The issue. His return is probable, as we mentioned, checked out on the sidelines, and now the Seahawks defense back out on the field. Bucks will start at their own 10. Pete Carroll always talks about complimentary football, a great opportunity for his defense right here with Tampa Bay pinned back to give that offense good field position to start their next drive. Not first down, Glennon hands it off to James. James gains two before he's wrapped up by Bobby Wagner. Earl Thomas, I tell you what, he comes from the safety spot like a bullet, and it's unbelievable. Here he is right here in the middle of the field. Watch him decipher this play, 
track Michael James. Once he makes his decision to go, I mean, he is like he is shot out of a cannon. Reminds me of Ed Reed a lot, Darren. Landed on second and eight. Brandon Browner on the coverage. Vincent Jackson, the intended receiver, no flags. This is going to be fun matchups to watch all day long. Vincent Jackson against both of the corners for Seattle. This is the back shoulder throw, very difficult to defend. Brandon Browner does a heck of a job. And we've seen Jackson lined up on both sides. Richard Sherman usually stays on the left. Browner at the right corner. put him in the slot this time to get him off those two corners. And Glenn's pass is caught for a first down by the tight end, Tim Wright, a converted wide receiver. Wide receiver at Rutgers, and Wright, who's had a couple of real good weeks with Glenn in games 14. Yeah, he's really played well the last few games, and I think that they're very excited of what he's going to be able to do this afternoon. He's one of the matchups. We've talked about how physical these corners are. If if Tim Wright can get those matchups that they're looking for, he could have a nice afternoon today. From the 26, a direct snap, but there is a flag. Direct snap to Mike James. We'll check in with Mike Carey. Ball start. Offense number 25. That's on James, who is trying to get into position for the direct snap. Yeah, little flinch. Yeah, just a very small flinch. That was a nice fake by Mike Glennon back there. I'm going to watch his pull a muscle fake that much. This is James, cuts to the outside, still on his feet. Mike James picks up a first down and more. James on first and 15, games 21. That's a nice physical run by Mike James. Watch how he finishes it. Here's the guy we've been talking about, Earl Thomas, at your safety. He's going to track. Now that he recognizes run, he comes up. Watch the lower the shoulder. Kind of comes in sideways. Mike James wins that battle against Earl Thomas. Longest run of the season for the rookie, James. Brian Leonard replaces James in the backfield. Half better remaining, first quarter. From the 42, this is Leonard. And Brian Leonard out to midfield before he's tackled by Cam Chancellor. So Leonard able to gain eight after the 21-yard pickup by James as time winds down. The Seattle Seahawks turn the ball over on their opening possession, and now the Buccaneers, who started this drive back at their own 10-yard line, are out at midfield. As the first quarter comes to an end, in Seattle, Mark Barron with the early pick. Bucks and the Seahawks scoreless. Offensive number is pretty even. The one turnover committed by the Seahawks. Russell Wilson on Seattle's opening drive, intercepted. In Tampa Bay territory by Mark Barron. Second and two for the Bucs as Glennon hands it off to James. And James is stopped at the line, so third and two coming up for the Bucs. You know, I think everybody talked about that Monday night game against St. Louis and maybe a blueprint being established on how to attack Seattle. And it was all focused on the Rams' defense and getting to Russell Wilson. The other thing that night was the running game of St. Louis, especially that last drive that took him all the way down the field with an opportunity to win. That's where Tampa Bay can follow the blueprint that was laid out by St. Louis in the running game. Ryan drops back into the shotgun, third down and two. Jackson in the slot. Lennon moving to his right, now throws, and the catch is made for a first down by Vincent Jackson at the Seahawks' 45-yard line.
I watched Mike Lennon in pregame warm-ups, and he throws the ball very, very well on the move. He's six foot six, but it was very fluid. Nice throw right there, quick on time to Vincent Jackson. Takes a big hit from Richard Sherman. Now the Bucks back to the backfield. James split wide to the right. New set of downs for Tampa Bay. Lennon looking left on first down, fires downfield, and turns to Sky Dawson. There is a flag. Earl Thomas came down with the football, but a penalty marker thrown. It will be against the Seahawks. The officiating crew is sending a message early in this game. Pass interference. Defense number 29. Talked about how physical they are in the run, actually coming from that inside spot. He turns around to play the ball. He's got his head around. I don't like that call. From what they told us before the game, if you turn your head around to locate the ball, maybe the little arm bar is what he's looking at to impede the progress, but regardless of it, everybody has to adjust the way this game is being called in regards to pass interference. Second pass interference call on the Seahawks today. This is James into the red zone, down to the 13-yard line as we check in with Joel Klatt. Joel. All right, Kenny, we take you to Washington. Crazy game, overtime. Chargers had a chance in regulation. First and goal from the one, but they settled for a field goal to open overtime. RG3 leads them right down the field. Darrell Young takes it in. 30-24, Washington wins it over San Diego. Kenny Moose and Goose. The fullback, Darrell Young with the game-winning touchdown, Darrell. Outstanding. It's about time they started feeding these guys. <laughs> Buccaneers have a fullback on the field right now, Eric Lorick, and he leads the way for Mike James, who is close to another. Bucks first down. Buccaneers have not been in the red zone very often this season. Over their first seven games, only 15 red zone possessions, seven touchdowns, both of those numbers fewest in the National Football League. But now the Bucs pick up another first down, first and 10 from the Seahawks 12. And remember, Tampa Bay started this drive at their own 10 yard line. Jackson shifting. Tenth play of the drive for the Bucks. Lennon, free play. Yep, there is a flag. Lennon throws to the back of the end zone of the catch is made for a touchdown by Tim Wright. Penalty will go against Seattle. Buccaneers had a free play. Offside. Defense, number 79, is the climb. Score is good. Glennon for Wright, his second touchdown of the season. Tim Wright coming off your traditional tight end spot, releases up the field. Now it's the scramble drill. Locked in to Earl Thomas. He tries to track him. That's some pretty good chemistry between two new guys in this offense, getting into that back shoulder of Tim Wright. Double the rookies, Glennon and Wright. Combined to give the Buccaneers the lead. Here's Ryan Lindell, native of Washington State. Connects on the extra point. 90-yard drive. Glennon to right, 7-0 Tampa Bay. Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. By Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Tampa Bay Buccaneers out to a 7-0 lead over the Seattle Seahawks. 90-yard drive, matching the longest of the season for the Bucs. And one of the key plays, the pass interference call on Earl Thomas. Pete Carroll talking to the officials during the commercial, not happy with the call on Earl Thomas. He's still talking to him. 
The initial indication was Seahawks football. Tampa Bay recovered the kick, however, offside. Kicking team number 21, five yard penalty, re kick from the 30 yard line. Rule number one on surprise onside kick don't be offside. We got to roll it till the ball is kicked. You can see them, they're over the line when he strikes the ball. We had this in our game last week, Kenny, and talking to Mike Pereira, he actually said that the officials will look at surprise onside difference. They'll give you a little bit of a gray area when it's a normal deep kick if you're on that line, but if it's a surprise onside in that setting, they're going to be very strict about that vertical plane. Dave Wanstad, I know Dave Wanstad, instructed his kickoff team, do not be offside. We're going to go surprise onside. Just had a great drive by our offense. Let's really kind of jump on these guys right now. It's rule number one on the surprise onside kick, and it's the second week in a row for us, Kenny, that we've actually seen them break rule number one. Unbelievable. Giants Eagles last week. Both times recovered by the team that executed the kick. Now, you talk about it so well. Did you ever go offside? Let's be honest. I was never on the recovery team. I wasn't fast enough to be on the recovery team. I was the guy in the front line of the return team that was getting blown up by the by The, the wedge. Team. You were the wedge guy, huh? <laughs> and it was Adams who was ruled offside who recovered the onside kick. So Lindell will set it up at the 30-yard line. There is Adams, the guilty buck. Main curse back deep for the Seahawks. And this time Liddell kicks it deep. Make it out the two by curse. Main curse out to the 25 yard line. Adam Hayward made the tackle on special teams. Pass interference call on Earl Thomas, setting up the touchdown. Glennon to right. Seven nothing lead for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Marshawn Lynch stretching, injured his knee earlier. Robert Turbin in the backfield. Start from the 25 yard line. Here's Turbin. Mark Barrett brings him down. Turbin able to gain nine. You got a nice little cutback there, Darrell. Uh, he's good, Tony. He really is. Wow. And Marshawn Lynch is coming back in for the Seattle Seahawks right now. And, and this is very important. Football is an emotional game, and really, Marshawn Lynch is that guy. We saw it on the opening drive. The difference he makes, once he starts getting that running game going, that whole offense kind of elevates. I think he elevates the defense, too. They, they stand up and watch him sometimes. They'll watch him film. He, he motivates everyone. On second and one, here's Lynch. So Lynch picks up a first down on his first carry since early in the first quarter. Seahawks flat out said, we need to run the ball more. They only had 40 offensive plays Monday night in St. Louis. 15 running plays, 8 carries for Lynch. Wilson on first down, what a hit by Barron on Baldwin. Good young safety right there. If you're going to blitz, Sometimes that's going to put you in a situation where maybe the coverage isn't ideal. You've got safety against wide receiver. Nice coverage and nice break on the ball by Mark Barron. How about Barron's game so far today? Six tackles, an interception, and now he breaks up that pass. Great to have a guy like that on the back end with so much trust in such a young spot in his career. Especially without 
The other starting safety, Deshaun Colson, for the second straight game. Wilson on second down, again looking for Baldwin. And it is Danny Gore making his return from injured reserve. I mean, that was a great pass right there. Watch right here on the outside. It hits him right in the chest. He just turns his head and keep, gets his eyes off the ball, and it pops right up. See how he turns his head right there? Look and see where the defender is. you got to go and look that ball in and then turn. You're coming into this game, guys. All 23 passes thrown Baldwin's way. He caught. He had no drops. That's two in a row on good defensive plays by Barron and then Gore. We're down at 10. Wilson under pressure, moving to his right. And Wilson is down at the 44-yard line, tackled by Michael Adams, who is guilty of the offsides. On the onside kick attempt, Adams makes the play. After Wilson gains eight, and the Seahawks will punt it away. These are not calm quarterback runs, they're scrambles, and you have to be aware of this. Here comes your blitz right here up the middle once that guy goes down inside. There's the double team, Mason Foster free to the quarterback, Daquan Bowers, again, they lose contain on Russell Wilson. You know they worked on this all week long. They've got to shore that up. That's the second time he's gotten outside. John Ryan punting for the second time. Fair catch called for by Eric Page. So the Bucks offense heads back out onto the field. Great job by their defensive unit led by Mark Barron. Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut, stuffing three cheeses into their crust since, well, this weekend, it's new. Buccaneers without a win this season, leading the Seahawks 7-0. Bucks start for their 16-yard line. Went in, handed it off to James. And James, James 2, tackled by Tony McDaniel. Very impressed with Tampa Bay's offense this afternoon. We all know about the 12th man here in Seattle. They have been backed up on every drive, and they are handling this difficult environment to play in very, very well. I think a lot of people were wondering how Mike Glennon would perform. Coach Schiano had their team practice against this noise all week, not just at the end of the play, but the entire offensive period. They had crowd noise pumped into practice. And it was so loud throughout the week, Glennon nearly lost his voice. There's James up the middle. Cam Chancellor finally brings him down at the 25-yard line. Third and one, but first, a game break. Joel Klatt. Yeah, Kenny, we go to Oakland, and Nick Foles comes up huge with Riley Cooper. 17-yard TD catch, and Philadelphia up 14-3 over Oakland. Back to you, Kenny Moose. Thanks, Joel. Third down and one. throws on third down and wide open the fullback Eric Warrig. That's his fourth reception of the season. Again, quiets the Seattle crowd. Game seven at a Tampa Bay first down. Go ahead, Darrell. No one ever pays attention to where the fullback is. Go ahead. All you, buddy. This is a classic <laughs> third down and short play because you've been running the ball so effectively you bring the fullback out. Look, he gets lost. I mean, it's just so hard to keep track of him because you expect him to be that lead blocker. You give a little flash and head right to the flat. He gets, a, he gets that big body moving so fast, he couldn't stay in bounds for another two or three yards. Put him right out bounds. <laughs> There's James up the middle, and Mike James picks up yet another Tampa Bay first down out to the 43-yard line, replacing the pro bowler, Doug Martin, missing his second consecutive game with the shoulder injury. They're doing such a nice job of running the ball up the middle. Davin Joseph, you see him coming in on Bobby Wagner. We talked at the top about the offensive line, the issues. Davin Joseph coming back from injury, not quite there yet this season. Jamon Meredith getting the start at left guard, the fifth left guard. That, that group is doing a heck of a job. Ryan Leonard. Leonard out to the 44. As we approach seven minutes remaining, second quarter here in Seattle, the Seahawks out to the best start in franchise history at 7-1. Those are the 0-7 Tampa Bay Bucks. 
who have not won a game, but so many of their losses have been close. Well, they're not playing like they haven't won a game yet. I'll tell you that today. Second down and nine. Off the fake to Leonard. Glennon for the fullback Lauren once again. Bobby Wagner comes up to make the tackle. Gain of two, so Mike Glennon and the Bucks facing another third and long. Third down and seven, and the Bucks have gone four for five on third down so far today. Just understand, don't make that critical mistake right here. You've played very clean the last, the last week in your, your last time to have an opportunity to play. You started out really well right now. Don't make those critical mistakes. to his right, throws, and then coming back is Tyquan Underwood, and he makes the catch. So Underwood, yet another Tampa Bay Buck out of Rutgers, played for Greg Schiano in college, comes back to make the play. You can see how physical these corners are. That is a nice job by Tyquan Underwood, and Mike Lennon as well. The protection breaks down, slides to his right. Good throw on the move. So the Bucs convert yet another third down. Glennon has started the game seven for eight. Now he hands it off to James. And it's Bobby Wagner again who makes the tackle. So Mike Glennon in his fifth NFL start. He has not yet won a game. Third round pick out of North Carolina State. Has looked very poised in this tough environment. Very impressive. You can see why they are so excited about him, why they made the change and waved Josh Freeman. Now Mike Lennon is very, very impressive here this afternoon and, and probably one of the most, if not the most difficult environment to play a game in. Second down and six. Here's James. And James fights his way down to the... 39-yard line, so a third down and four upcoming. A Tampa Bay offense, not only without Doug Martin, Pro Bowl left guard Carl Nix, they placed wide receiver Mike Williams on injured reserve this week. Made the change of quarterback after three games, but the Bucs have been impressive here in Seattle today. are now six of seven on third down. Mike James is going to do a lot of the dirty work, running between the tackles. Brian Leonard's going to come in on third down situations, and he's going to be your passing outlet. Bobby Wagner, number 54, has him in coverage. He's already out leveraged immediately at the snap. This is the area that Tampa Bay can attack. Get running backs matched up against linebackers. Get Tim Wright matched up against linebackers or safeties. Once again in the red zone. Glennon with time. Can't find anyone. Now he fires to the end zone. It's Underwood. Touchdown. Tyquan Underwood. This is tremendous poise being displayed by Mike Glennon. This breaks down. And yet he's able to escape and get his eyes downfield immediately and find Taekwon Underwood open in the end zone. Yeah, like you said, Darrell, the pocket collapsed. Right now, extending the play. I mean, they got to stay and, and, and match up. Almost like playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Something that they've been dominating. Both touchdowns today. Lindell the extra point and the Tampa Bay Bucks have taken a 14-0 lead over the top team in the NFC, the Seattle Seahawks. First touchdown of the season for Tyquan Underwood as Jonathan Casillas has some fun with Tyquan's hair. 
How about Mike Lennon on the drive? Perfect. Five of five. 57 yards. Very impressed with his poise in this environment today. I mean, backed up. Each time they started to drive, they've been backed up. The loudest part on the field. And on that one, just escaping pressure, getting his eyes right downfield. Kirk's on the return for Seattle. And Tremaine Kirk's loses the football. And it's recovered by Keenan, the Buccaneers punter, who also handles the kickoffs. So Tampa Bay... Out to a 14-0 lead, and they recover the second Seattle turnover. Looked like it was going to be a big return. It's pursued from behind by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Russell Shepard with the hustle play, and the <laughs> uh, you got to love it with the kicker. I thought he was going to try and stay up and take it in. Michael Kanan, smart play on his part to get down. Not used to having that ball with big bodies coming after you. He's holding on to that football for dear life. So the Buccaneers offense right back on the field from the Seattle 31. As Glennon fires and the catch is made by Wright and there is a late flag. Tim Wright working out of the slot. Just a vertical release right up the field. He's down that seam. 27 yards and then the hit by Thomas. Helmet to helmet. After the reception, personal foul. Vanessa Arrocas, number 29. Low to the head of a defensive receiver. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Half the distance is two yards, so it will be first and goal for the Bucks from the two. In my opinion, though, no intent by Earl Thomas to go helmet to helmet on Tim Wright. He's he's getting down to avoid that big contact. I think the targeting by Earl Thomas was correct. It's just that reaction by the receiver. Right. First and goal from the two-yard line as James throws, and it's Crabtree for the touchdown on a jump pass from James. They're pulling all the stops out today. Unbelievable. Surprise onside kick, jump pass. Crabtree's here at the tight end spot. Now nobody can go downfield. Big sell on the play action pass. He sneaks through. He's actually on the ground. Unbelievable that that play was able to be completed and executed properly. Twenty-one nothing, Tampa Bay. Set up by the special teams turnover, recovered by Kanan, and then it's James to Crabtree. Here's Mike James, the rookie running back out of Miami, who throws the touchdown pass to the tight end, Tom Crabtree, and the Seattle Seahawks are stunned, trailing the winless Buccaneers 21 to nothing. Uh, look at the expressions on the faces of the guys from the Legion of Boom. I mean, they, they have been just absolutely jumped on this afternoon. Largest deficit this season for the Seahawks. And during this 11-game home win streak, their largest deficit had been 13 against New England last season. One more look. James, the Crabtree. The new season of the Ultimate Fighter is powerful, relentless, epic, and it's just getting started. Catch the show, critics say, delivers the goods. And see why they call Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate the new best rivalry in sports. It's the Ultimate Fighter, all new Wednesday, only on Fox Sports 1. A shocker here in Seattle. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. They came into this game with only nine offensive touchdowns all season. As Marshawn Lynch takes it out to the 24-yard line as we approach the two-minute warning. First three possessions for the Seahawks. Wilson picked off by Barron. A couple of punts and then a fumbled kickoff. 
21 nothing, Tampa Bay. 21 nothing, Bucks. Yes, 21 nothing, Bucks. Over the Seahawks. Here in Seattle. Seahawks 7 and 1. Bucks 0 and 7. Off the fake to Turbin. Wilson escapes. There is a flag. Wilson still on his feet. Out of bounds at the 40. Russell Wilson gains 16. Here's Mike Carey. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the quarterback and 91, a blow to the head. From the end of the run, 15 yards, automatic first down. That's on Daquan Bowers. Should be coming from closest to you on the screen. He loops back underneath as Russell Wilson goes to escape. I think it could have been Gerald McCoy, actually 93, that went up the field. And he reached out. I thought it was going to be a face mask call, grabbing the helmet, but actually went with the blow to the head. So Gerald McCoy, number 93, I think, is who that penalty was actually on. Flag was thrown early in the play. So it looks like McCoy not Powers. And now another flag. Seahawks may have had the 12th man in the huddle. <laughs> there was no foul on the play. All of the action was legal. First down. Oh, you know what? J.R. Sweezy, you saw the little flinch on 64 before he went to tap Max Unger. I don't know if all the action was legal on that play. So the flag has been picked up. First and ten from the 45-yard line. As Wilson goes deep. And there is a flag. Michael Adams on the coverage. Pass interference. Tampa Bay. Now this one's going to be a little bit more definitive than what we've seen earlier in the game on the outside. Or coming from the slot, I'm sorry, number 21, Michael Adams, on the deep throw. He gets his head around, and that is what the officials told us before the game. You can't just get your head around to track the ball and then get your arm up. Defense number 21 from the spot of the foul. On that first down. Well, they're being consistent calling on both teams, Darrell, so that's nice. And that's the important thing. Once yep. you start the game calling it a certain way, stay consistent the entire game. And that's what Mike Carey and his crew have done here this afternoon. But two huge penalties against Tampa Bay. Relaxing a little bit here at the end of the first half and giving Seattle some life. Seahawks gained 29 yards on the penalty. Now Wilson out of the middle in for the touchdown. Jermaine Curse. And there is a flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 93. The score is good. The enforcer will go on the kickoff. So the penalty is called on uh, Gerald McCoy. There it is. You know, coming out of the slot. Safeties lose track. Keith Tandy, number 37, moving to the outside. Got to stay home in the middle of the field. Now, also looks like Michael Bowie is down on the field with an injury. Rookie right tackle out of Northeastern State. We already talked about the issue for the offensive line at the tackle position for the Seattle Seahawks. Looks like things could change again. Extra point is good. So the Seattle Seahawks have cut the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead to 21-7. An improbable start to this game here in Seattle. Seahawks have won 
11 straight at home. Buccaneers looking for their first win of the season, but uh, Tampa Bay took a 21-point lead before that Seattle score. Relaxed a little bit there, but some big penalties on Tampa Bay during the course of that drive to help out Seattle. I had an opportunity to visit with Butch Davis on the field before the game, who was with our team in Dallas in 1989 when we started out 0-7 and went on to a 1-15 year and asked him how the team was doing, and he said, we actually have had our best two days of practice, Wednesday and Thursday this week. He goes, the guys are actually very confident coming out here with the environment, an 0-7 team, been very impressed with the poise that Tampa Bay has displayed during the game, except on that last drive. A team like Seattle, you have got to close them out. You've got to finish this game, and you can just see a little bit of an emotional letdown and a little bit of help with those penalties on that last drive, and boom, it's 21-7. Your 1-15 season in Dallas came in Jimmy Johnson's first season as an NFL head coach. It's Greg Schiano's second year with the Bucks after a very successful 11-year stint at Rutgers and when you look at some of the key plays that have been made today and, and so much has been talked about the Buccaneers situation getting off to the 0-7 start two of the three touchdowns have been scored by guys who played for Seattle at Rutgers Tim Wright and Tyquan Underwood Seahawks have never overcome a 21-point deficit in their history and what a first half for Mike Glennon, Russell Wilson's teammate and road roommate at North Carolina State. Very, very impressed with Mike Glennon here in the first half, and really mainly because of how the half went. I mean, they were backed up on all their drives, except that turnover after the kickoff, starting backed up with this crowd, how loud they can get. Mike Glennon and this Tampa Bay offense have done a tremendous job functioning very, very well in a difficult environment with this noise. Largest deficit that the uh, Seahawks have ever come back from to win a game. 20 points back in December of 95 in Denver. Minute 40 remaining. What's coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, Kurt Menefee? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, the Cowboys pull a late comeback. The Saints tumble to Geno Smith and the Jets. Plus the Chargers and Redskins go to OT in D.C. It's all coming up at the half. We'll see you then. And this first half here in Seattle, the one that I'm sure has folks around the country shaking their heads with the Tampa Bay Bucks taking a 21-0 lead. Kowska kicking off from midfield following that penalty on McCoy. And it's a fair catch at the 13-yard line. So the Bucks have all three of their timeouts. And remember, they deferred after winning the toss to start the game, so they will get the ball first in the second half as well and, and a very interesting decision right there to fair catch that kick uh, you're kicking from the 50 you might think they'll just kick it out of the end zone but they actually try a little bloop kick down there an opportunity for return to get some momentum back from your offense going in at halftime but you start playing conservative at this point kenny and you want to sit on this and all of a sudden seattle gets the ball back it could get to 21 14 at halftime Tampa Bay does save a little bit of time with the fair catch so a minute 40 with three timeouts. Uh, I take the run back and give up the seconds. From the 13-yard line, Glennon hands it off to Mike James. James up the middle for four, out to the 17. And a timeout is taken by Seattle. Here's how we got to 21 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Great boys right here, great chemistry with Mike Glennon and Tim Wright thrown to the back shoulder on a little scramble drill. This one again, out of the pocket, a lot of pressure. There's that poise again from Mike Glennon, finds Dequan Underwood, and then this one, I tell you what, a jump pass. Tom Crabtree goes to the ground, is able to get back to his feet and execute the jump pass for the touchdown. And then the Seahawks scoring on their last possession. Buccaneers have reached the end zone on their last three drives, including a 90-yard drive and an 84-yard drive. Second down and six, following the Seattle timeout. From the 17-yard line, Buccaneers keep it on the ground once again with James, and he spins out to the 19. Russell down by Tony McDaniel, so it is now 
third down and four following another timeout taken by Seattle. They were together for three years at North Carolina State. Mike Lennon, Russell Wilson. Very complimentary of each other as well. I, I think Mike Lennon learned a lot from Russell Wilson being his understudy for a couple of years there. But I think Russell Wilson learned a lot from Mike Lennon as well. It was nice to hear the way they talked about each other. There's a great thing by Russell Wilson. Look at the Sharpie in his hand right there. He doesn't only look at the pitchers. He's going to take notes, and he's going to keep that through the course of the game. And when he gets into the second half, the fourth quarter, he can go back and look at similar looks that he saw in the first half to refresh his memory. Buccaneers six for seven on third down. And they keep it on the ground with Leonard. And Brian Leonard able to pick up a Tampa Bay first. That's a nice job of going and keeping his legs going, huh, Moose? Let me tell you what, Tony. That, that play is going to get lost in this game. That was a huge play by Brian Leonard because there is nowhere to go. This should be fourth down, and Tampa Bay should be setting up the punt right now. But as you said, Tony, look at him drive his yeah. legs to get that first down. Bucks do not use a timeout. Seahawks do not have any remaining. Buccaneers with three. Shifts. On first down, it's James. Block continues to run, and now some extracurricular activity. Donald Penn in the middle of it. Laycock's winding down. It's down to 17. They better get in there and get a play if they want to get one off. Yeah, you get the idea. The Bucs will be happy to yeah. let the clock run down yeah. and head to the locker room with a 14-point lead. Two-second differential. Yeah, they didn't reset the play clock. It went all the way down to zero right there. And now the Bucs take a timeout. Greg Schiano out on the field. So the clock stops with... Two seconds remaining, and yeah, he wanted I, the play clock pumped back up. I, I agree. I mean, you, you know, you're trying to settle this down. Here's where the, the skirmish starts right there. DeMar Dodson and Cliff Averill getting after it. Don, Donald Penn's going to come in. He's one of your, your enforcers on the offensive side of the ball. Now, you're getting this whole thing sorted out. Once you get it sorted out, you got to bump that play clock back up. And like you pointed out, Ken, I think Tampa Bay at that point is happy to just let's get into the locker room here at halftime. Yeah, once they picked up that first down with Leonard, Seahawks out of timeouts. Tampa Bay will get the ball to start the second half. You mentioned Donald Penn, pro bowler two seasons ago. He's making his 100th consecutive start. Great story there about Donald Penn getting picked up from the Minnesota Vikings practice squad brought down to Tampa Bay, and he's been a fixture on that offensive line. Tough guy, continues to get better and better. Always feel like he has to work, outwork everybody around him. First half comes to an end with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers leading the 7-1 Seattle Seahawks by the score of 21-7 as we send you south to Los Angeles. The News of Halftime Report, take it away, Kurt. Don't be afraid of quickness today. Back at home, this team can't touch us. Let's go out there for the first play for and show them they shouldn't have never got on the play. He fires to the end zone. It's Underwood. Touchdown. Craig Trey for the touchdown on a jump pass from James. Not only did the Buccaneers get on the plane and make the trek from the southeast to the Pacific Northwest, but they lead by 14 as we take a look at the first half numbers. Yeah, and really both of these teams came in committed to the running game. Seattle almost seven yards. That because Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson averaging over eight yards a carry. More impressive though, Tampa Bay. They had to be able to run the ball to stay with it. You know, Mike Glennon, we talked about it in his first four starts, thrown more passes than anybody in NFL history. Went in 10 of 11 in the first half. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. It's one thing to commit to the running game, Kenny, but you have you have to have success in it to stay with it. And Tampa Bay did that in the first half. Can they do it again here in the second? 
Bucks won the coin toss. They deferred, so Tampa Bay gets the ball first. And they will start from the 20-yard line with a 14-point lead. And turnover is a key factor in that first half. Turnovers, uh, third down by Tampa Bay, seven for eight on third downs. Uh, doing it in this environment maybe the most impressive thing when you come here there's a few things that you expect difficulty on third down you expect the other team to be able to generate turnovers seattle is usually good in this environment and taking the ball away i've been very very impressed with mike glennon and this offense handling this environment 11 straight home wins for the seahawks one shot of their franchise record as glennon hands it off to james another nice run by James. What did you learn at halftime, Deuce? Well, I got to talk uh, with Pete Carroll. He came up to me. He goes, doesn't look like an 0-17 to me, does it? Uh, I asked him, I said, what are you going to talk to your team about at halftime? He goes, listen, we got to come out. We got to make believe like it's 0-0. Come out and play our game. They've done a good job of going and taking at us of what we wanted to do. Um, also, I asked him about Michael Bowie. He went in. He said he expects him to come back out. We'll check on that. And Coach Seattle also, don't let up, he said. Keep going at these guys. We can't let them have a letdown. All right, gets up to second down and one. Here is James, and he picks up a first down. So Mike James, his previous season high was 45 yards on the ground against Atlanta. Now with 94 yards as he fills in for the injured pro bowler, Doug Martin. Very impressed with what Tampa Bay's offensive line is doing. Davin Joseph, he is getting back closer to 100% coming off that injury. This is a group that we expected to be able to dominate games with Carl Nix there at left guard. It hasn't worked out that way because of different issues during the course of the year. They are playing excellent this afternoon. Who set it down for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Off the play fake and then the fake end around to Dawson. Lennon's pass is short, intended for Vincent Jackson, and Lennon took a hit at the end of the play. Well, Richard Sherman, watch him on the top of your screen right here. He comes in on a blitz. He bit on a little bit of a reverse right there. Glennon does a nice job, though. Calm in the pocket. His eyes are downfield looking for his receivers. He felt the pressure and threw it to an area where it wasn't going to hurt him. He's impressed me a lot today, Darrell. Absolutely. Only a second incompletion today, Goose. What in 10 of 12. On second and 10, it's James, and he breaks free from the initial tackle attempt by Tony McDaniel all the way out to the 38-yard line. So James making something out of nothing, gaining six. This is when you have confidence in your running game. When you get to second and 10 and you hand the ball off. And Michael James has been phenomenal this afternoon running the ball. That was a very tough run. He hits 100 for the day. And we talked about the success the Buccaneers have had on third down. They are seven for eight. Must get to the 42-yard line for a first. And they do. It is Brian Leonard into Seahawks territory again, quieting this crowd. A gain of 13. And the Bucks are now 8 of 9 on third down. And again, when you have a team that has great corners, you've got to move away from those areas and try and get your matchups. This is Brian Leonard out of the backfield against Bobby Wagner on that arrow route. You go out towards the flat, put your foot in the ground, and come back to the middle of the field. Nice job of securing the ball, too, getting two hands on it, and you don't know if that safety's coming. Now the end around. The sky dunks it. Dawson has another box first down inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Sky Dawson, the rookie out of TCU, gains 14. Eric Loring, Darrell. Well, I'd say it's a, right out there. Yeah, it's a nice job of having that extra guy out there on the end around because a lot of times it doesn't come up clean. You know, the, the defensive team plays their responsibilities and have Eric Loring out there to just clean up anything that's there. Whatever was said at halftime to this defense, it, it didn't hit home because Tampa Bay had just come out and picked up right where they left off. Now Bruce Herman racing off the field. And James takes it up the middle. I mentioned Irvin heading off. There was some confusion amongst the Seahawks defenders as they lined up. And 
It looked like they only had 10 on the field as Irvin headed to the sidelines. And again, a lot of the big runs today have been coming right up the middle in that guard center guard area. So what we thought may be an area where the big bodies of Seattle could take advantage of the guard position because of Jamon Meredith, Davin Joseph not being 100% yet. Those guys in the middle for Tampa Bay's offensive line have been playing really well all day. Buccaneers in the red zone. From the Seahawks, 17. Bunch formation to the left. Lennon looking left. Now being chased. And in a smart play, he throws it away. Seattle's going to be upset because they're going to want an intentional grounding. He is outside of the pocket, and the ball got beyond the line of scrimmage, even out of bounds. Good coverage by Richard Sherman there. Here comes the bunch. This is the route that they scored the touchdown on. Taekwon Underwood doesn't go across the field. He actually sits down. Now you hear the boos going again. That is a heads-up play by Mike Lennon. That is not intentional grounding. Now second and 10 from the Seattle 17. The handoff to James. And James takes it. To the 15-yard line, so a third and long coming up. James picks up two as the Buccaneers shuffle personnel. They score touchdowns on three consecutive drives in the second quarter, including a 90-yard drive and an 84-yard drive. This will be the 10th play of this Tampa Bay possession. Third down and eight. Bucks will send out the field goal unit. Again, the poise of Mike Lennon in the pocket as everything breaks down, very calmly escapes to his right. Tyquan Underwood's going to work all the way up into the back of the end zone and come across and be there for Mike Lennon as he breaks out. Nice ball security, two hands in the pocket. There's a chance for a huge play for Tyquan Underwood. Watch. Both hands got to make that one. That's a difference maker. Well, Earl Thomas, too, had a nice opportunity that he didn't take advantage of. So here's Lindell out of Washington State. 33-yard attempt. Cannon places it down. And Lindell's kick is good. He began his career with the Seahawks. There is a flag. Yeah, that has to be offsides on oh, Seattle. Boy, he was there almost jump. before the ball was placed. Greg Schiano again, well out onto the field. Think he's into this game? Oh, uh, yeah. No, don't take points off the board. I like this decision here by Coach Shiano. Offside, defense, if declined, scores good. Timeout. So the Buccaneers add three to their lead. It's now 24-7 Tampa Bay. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. By Sprint. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Darrell, very elusive <laughs> at the farmer's market here in Seattle yesterday. What, do you have a little part-time job there, Darrell? What are you doing back there, man? I forgot about the return. So the first go-around, <laughs> when it went over my head, I thought it was all right, but I forgot it was coming back. You heard just go over your head, huh? Yeah, I almost caught a king salmon right in the back of the head. <laughs> Excellent agility. Still have it. Short kickoff kick kick. is scooped up at the 10-yard line by Curse, who fumbled earlier. And he's down at the 14-yard line. Seattle Seahawks Monday night in St. Louis ran only 40 plays, just 22 in the first half today. That's the blueprint that everybody's been talking about. Not so much what they were able to do defensively with Chris Long and Robert Quinn getting to Russell Wilson, establishing a running game that's efficient and effective and keeping Russell Wilson and the offense off the field. Two Seahawks who suffered the injuries in the first half, both in the game. Right tackle Michael Bowie and 
Marshawn Lynch as the catch is made by Golden Tate. That's his first reception today. Only the third catch by a Seahawks wide receiver. Not a lot of opportunities. You're trying to establish the running game. You want to get Marshawn Lynch going. So now you're not having those opportunities in the passing game. Gain of just two. Now second and eight. Seahawks have the ball in St. Louis for under 22 minutes. Under 11 minutes in the first half against the Bucks. From the 16-yard line on second down. Wilson loaded to his right away from Levante David. And he connects with the tight end, Zach Miller. For a Seahawks first down out of the 33-yard line, a 16-yard pass play. You know, standing right behind Russell Wilson and watching him drop on that play. It's amazing how deceiving it is watching him being able to get out to the outside. I mean, his speed, he comes out really nice and easy, and all of a sudden he just turns it on. It's tough for those defense to ends to go and get an angle to go and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, but you can't have a safety blitz with a linebacker coming, Tony, and allow him to the outside. I agree. On first down, it's Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. Now for the 46-yard line, another Seahawks first down. Levante David finally made the tackle again of 13. Never has to change his path, and that's one thing you have to do to Marshawn Lynch. It's just going to be this angle right here. He never has to break his stride. You can't allow him. You've got to stop him right now. You've got to force him to put his foot in the ground and cut. He doesn't have to do that until he's five yards down the field. So now you can sense the Seattle offense starting to get into a rhythm. From the 46-yard line, it's Lynch. In spot. Cross midfield. There is a flag. Lynch picks up. Another first down. But there is a penalty marker on the field. And this is another thing that happened to him last week against St. Louis. Every time there was a positive play, they would have penalties that would bring them back. We'll see if that's the case here again on that last play. Holding offense number 86. Ten-yard penalty is still his first down. That's on a tight end, Miller. Trying to secure that edge. If you're going to be effective in this style of play, once your arms get outside, you can see he's outside of the framework of the body. You've got to let him go at that point. Mark Barron has had a heck of a day today coming in to take on Marshawn Lynch. There's that emotion that is so infectious for this offense. They missed it in the first half because Marshawn Lynch hurt his knee and was out. He's starting to establish it here. Look for the left shoulder of Goose, first at 18. Following the penalty. From the 38-yard line, this is Turbin. Turbin to midfield. For Los Angeles, Kurt Menefee. Another mini upset in the making, maybe. Cleveland on top of Baltimore. That is cut just a little bit closer. Joe Flacco to Marlon Brown, who's having a nice year. 19-yard touchdown. It's still the Brown 14-10 lead at halftime. Give me loose and goose. Into an area of the game that Russell Wilson talked about. Play 25 to play 40. Things are very critical because they're separated from the start of the game and the finish where you have excitement. Let's see how Seattle handles this. He feels the Seahawks have had lulls during that period. As he went back and looked at all of last year's games, there's Lynch. And, you know, and, and sitting down and speaking with Russell Wilson, we talked to him as a rookie last year and again on Friday. And, he talks about his preparation. He says in the NFL, preparation must be relentless because everybody is an All-American. And, you know, you mentioned him writing on those Polaroid photos back in the first half. And he reevaluated every game from last season. And notice that plays 25 through 40. Seahawks needed to pick it up during that time. We're down at three. Wilson over the middle. The catch is made for a first down. The Buccaneers 29, a 19-yard pass play. Good placement by Russell Wilson because he allows Golden Tate 
to hit this at full speed. He doesn't have to slow down to make the catch. It's not on the back shoulder or down low. Hits him in stride. Both those linebackers over pursuing. Seahawks started this drive at their own 14-yard line. Eighth play of the drive from the Bucks, 29. Wilson looks to spin away from pressure. And now he throws along the sidelines. It is Doug Baldwin who made the catch. And it is Rule unbelievable. putting up both feet down in bounds. How do you throw that ball down? Cross your body going to the left. And now the Seahawks hurry to the line. They don't want to give the Bucks a chance to challenge. And it looks like he did get both feet down. First and goal. From the 10, off the fake for Lynch, Wilson, end zone, touchdown! Well, we talked about this defense carrying the Seattle team through the first half of the season. It's going to be up to the offense if they're going to get to 8-1 and one today to carry the Seattle team. And Russell Wilson did his part on this drive. There's the touchdown run, but Tony, I agree with you. Oh, Greg man. Schiano says he's never seen anybody better throwing the football on the move. Going to your left as a right-handed quarterback, that throw to Doug Baldwin was unbelievable. Hauska adds the extra point. First rushing touchdown of the season for Russell Wilson. Seahawks pull to it in 10. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new 2014 Dodge Durango. Ten-point game here in Seattle. Buccaneers had a 21-point lead. There's Daryl Bevel, the Seahawks offensive coordinator, looking at the pictures. Nine plays, 86 yards, and Russell Wilson runs it in. Eric Page lets it go through the end zone. Bucks will start at the 20. Mike Lennon, a couple of touchdown passes in the first half, and Wilson says, can you top this? And now meet your Fox Tuesday night starting lineup. Jake Johnson, new girl. Ice Barinholtz, the male nurse on the Mindy Project. Yeah. Terry Crews, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah! All new comedy starting Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Don't miss it. Terry Crew looked a little impressive right there at the end. The other guys didn't impress me as far as being intimidated. How about to you, Kenny? Come to next Tuesday, Bruce. <laughs> nah, 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 we will do that. Kenny, just flip the switch and take on Terry Crews. <laughs> Chris, I have to admit, I can't hear a word you're saying. Run the 20 on first down, it's James with the crowd on their feet. Seahawks fans set the World record for crowd noise verified by the Guinness Book of World Records back in September. They reached 131.9 decibels, but then they were eclipsed by the Kansas City Chiefs crowd at Arrowhead Stadium in October. They want it back. They do. I know it's loud up there in the booth, but down here on the field, it is piercing. What'd you say, Goose? Exactly. What's that? Second and seven. down and more. Mike James out to the 40-yard line. His best performance as a pro now has 140 yards on 24 carries. Uh, Mike James has been impressive. We talked about it with Marshawn Lynch. He doesn't have to change his course. He's able to stay on that line. Good lead block by Eric Lorig to get the linebacker out of the hole so he doesn't have to change direction. Four more yards. There is a flag. 
That one must have got stuck in his pocket because it was late. Holding offense number 84, 10 yard penalty. That's on the tight end, Tom Crabtree. Darrell, when we met with the Buccaneers in the preseason, we did their game in New England against the Patriots, and one of the big questions this coaching staff had was, who would be our number two running back behind Doug Martin? Absolutely. It was one of the things that, that Coach Sullivan, the offensive coordinator, was looking for. And he's found his guy. Mike James has had an unbelievable afternoon today. But going into camp for this season, who's going to back up Doug Martin? You can see how important that's been as he's been out with that shoulder injury. Here's Leonard up the middle. And he's wrapped up by a trio. Of Seahawks as we approach three minutes remaining third quarter Buccaneers scored touchdowns on their first three possessions James perhaps with a uh, contact lens issue I know the feeling now a 10-point game as the Seahawks have scored touchdowns on their last two possessions So another third and long coming up, but third down has not been a deterrent for the Buccaneers today. They are 8 for 10. And stubbornly consistent right there for the Tampa Bay offense with the holding penal penalty getting to second and 20 and still committed to the run. The Red Bryant looks to be shaken up. Seahawks left defensive end. He leaves the field. Placed by the former Buck, Michael Bennett. Glennon <laughs> on third and 14. Backpedaling. Looks to set up the screen. Leonard makes the catch. Needs to get to midfield. And he does not. Leonard brought down at the 40 four-yard line so the Bucks will punt it away leading by 10 and again this is just smart football you get into that first and 20 situation is going to be very difficult to convert stay to your course keep with that game plan and Mike Sullivan the offensive coordinator for Tampa Bay said and we've talked to Mike Glennon about it this week punting the football is a successful drive in this environment against this defense they can't have the turnover and the Buccaneers are punting for only the second time today. Punted on their first possession of the game. What wow. a pick. Feeling it inside the five. Wow. Golden Tate up the middle. Still on his feet. And Tate continues along. He's across midfield. Tate inside the 30 and finally out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A 52-yard punt and then a 71-yard return. It's amazing because Golden Tate, I mean, and before he received the ball, had his hands on him. He didn't know which way the return was. Then he gets the ball and goes on his run. And this is a cardinal rule you don't break, Tony. You fielded it inside the five-yard line. I, he Carroll had to be on the sideline going, no, no, no. And then, yes, yes, yes. Look at the effort by Golden Tate, all the tackles that he breaks. We spoke with Levante David, and he said, Hey, you know, I know you guys are talking about Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch, but we cannot allow Golden Tate to get into space on the offense. Well, they've done a good job stopping him on the offense, but in special teams, there's a huge play. And career long, 71-yard punt return by Tate. And now Wilson on first and 10 from the 25, hands it off to Lynch, and Lynch lost the football. Looked like it was punched out by David. Final minute to play, third quarter. With the Buccaneers leading by 10. Here he is going down, but I didn't hear any whistles down here on the in the end zone. This was a marketing that he was down. Lynch stripped by David playing right to the whistle. So now a second down and eight. Following the two-yard pickup. Three wide receiver set. Ball put in motion. 
Wilson's pass a bit low. Ricardo Lockett able to make the catch. Third career reception for Lockett as this third quarter comes to an end. Seahawks trail by 21. It's now a 10-point game with Seattle on the move. We start the fourth quarter in Seattle. The 0-7 Buccaneers scored touchdowns on three straight possessions in the second quarter. But the Seahawks have come back with scores on their last two possessions. Touchdown run by Russell Wilson. Well, the catch is being challenged by Tampa Bay. Although it happened in the third quarter, still eligible for a challenge. So this is the last play of the third quarter. Ruled a catch on the field, Ricardo Lockett. Now, if the ball doesn't move, even though the ball makes contact with the ground first, as long as he maintains possession with his hands and it doesn't move, it's a catch. But you can see right here, it appears that the ball has shifted as he rolls over. So, this is a rule that went into play years ago with the St. Louis Rams in the championship game with a catch that was out and the ball went to the ground, it hit the ground, but it didn't move at all. The ground did not uh, aid in establishing possession. Against Tampa Bay? Yeah. Ricky Prohl. So Greg Schiano challenging. It was a five-yard game, so it will either be third and three at the 18 if the call stands, or third and eight back at the 23 if it is overturned. You wonder if you would have had the opportunity to do the challenge if it wasn't that break as the last play in the third quarter going to the fourth quarter. So much time to see replays and have communication. Right, we saw the Seahawks, throw that challenge. Seahawks hustle to the line earlier on the play right before the Wilson touchdown run. The catch by Baldwin. I think they overturned this, guys. Doesn't seem like much, 33 yeah. to third and eight, but I tell you what, the way this game has been going, that, that's, a, that's a pretty Every substantial difference Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. They would still be in field goal range, but a big difference between seven and three if they do not pick up the first down if it's overturned. Again, the big thing is if you go to the ground with that ball in your pos in the possession of your hands and it doesn't move, it doesn't. The ground does not aid you in establishing or maintaining possession. But you see a little bit of movement there as it hits the ground, and then as he rolls through, it looks as though he's lost possession. This one will really give you the good angle as Ricardo Lockett turns over, and you see that the ball has shifted in his hands. It was ruled a reception on the field, so there must be conclusive evidence in order for the play to be overturned. Because of the delay in getting this, it, it wouldn't surprise me as you're going through and, and kind of sorting out everything, but because there's no time difference, it was the end of the quarter. Are we going to go back into the third quarter on an incomplete? All right, let's check in with Mike Pereira in Los Angeles. Mike, what do you think? I never disagree with Goose. He thinks it's going to be overturned, and so do I. Uh, you know, but they will have to go back and put time back on the clock, which will then have another play in the third quarter. But watch here. I think this is a good look here because you're going to see control first. But watch the hands come After off review, the ball there. The rule in the field stands. Wow. Third down. So that's, Mike agrees wow. with Goose. That's what you get for following that's Goose, right. Mike. I guess that's why. See, I never should agree with the goose, but I'm still going to agree with the goose. You, you learned your, your lesson, Mike. The, the ball, the, the ball does pop loose, in the, in my opinion, but that's a judgment call that they have to make. But I think it's a bad call, also, Mike. We're going to stick to our guns on this one, baby. All the time. <laughs> yeah, it's your glasses. Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you for the rims. I appreciate you sending that out to me. All right, thanks, Mike. So the Buccaneers lose the challenge and lose a timeout.
So instead of third down and eight, it's third down and three. Seahawks must get to the 15-yard line for a first. Wilson goes a 360 under pressure. Now he throws, and it's incomplete. So after all that, the Seahawks will send out the field goal unit. Watch uh, Levante David right here. See if he is spying Russell Wilson. No, he's in coverage. It's actually right there. There's your spy. Jonathan Casillas. Jonathan Cass and you know what? And it, it goes back. It's very, very difficult to spy somebody very athletic. And you can see Russell Wilson there being able to avoid and extend that play and make the throw down the field. So here's Steven Hauska from the right hash. 36-yard field goal attempt. Ryan places it down. Holds the Seahawks to a in seven. There's Golden Tate, his 71-yard punt return. Set up the Seahawks in Tampa Bay territory. Held to a field goal. It's now a seven-point game. That's a very aggressive decision by Golden Tate as well. I mean, feeling a punt inside the five-yard line. Very risky in that situation, but it pays off big for the Seattle. Seahawks who trailed by 21 now a seven-point game as Eric Page takes it out not able to pull off a Golden Tate impression on special teams now two quarterbacks who know each other very well Russell Wilson and Mike Glennon both grew up in the state of Virginia they both won state championships in high school Wilson three times and then together for three seasons at North Carolina State, both third-round picks in the NFL draft over the last two years. Wilson went to play minor league baseball in 2011. Glennon was named the starter. Wilson still had eligibility, went up to Wisconsin. Yeah, that's one of the uh, examples that Mike Glennon told us about. Russell Wilson is just very, very meticulous in his preparation. You see him over on the sideline taking notes again on the Polaroids. First and 10 from the 17. Glennon with time to the fullback, Loring. Knocked out of bounds at the 21 by Bruce Irvin. I think the most impressive thing about Mike Glennon in the Tampa Bay offense today is they have not had really great field position to start their drives. They had the one fumble on the kickoff that gave them good field position. But other than that, they've been backed up, which is the most difficult environment to function in when you have the 12th man here in Seattle. Wilson continues to study those photos on the sideline. With his former road roommate out on the field, and Glennon hands it off to James. And Mike James with another big run out to the 33-yard line. So James gains 11 and now has 151 yards on the day. This is just well done by everybody. It's so difficult to run the ball. Jeremy Zuta pulling at center. Goose, I know you love that. When's the last time we saw a center getting out on a pull? I don't I think Dermani Dawson from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll tell you what, Zuta has a lot of athletic ability. And that offensive line does a great job on their down blocks and staying with their blocks to open up lanes. James with five runs and at least ten yards today. Again, planted with good protection, and he hits James out of the backfield, and we will head for a game break with Kurt. How about a record-setting day for the Eagles, uh, pardon me, Nick Foles. This touchdown pass to Riley Cooper, his seventh, that's right, seventh touchdown pass of the day. He's the sixth NFL player ever to do that, first since 1969, and Joe Cap. They're rolling in Oakland, Kenny Moose and Goose. Take that, Peyton Manning. Wow. Peyton did it week one against the Ravens. And now Nick Foles coming back. From his concussion, we saw the Eagles last week. Michael Vick started the game, was replaced by Matt Barkley. So Nick Foles with seven touchdown passes today against Oakland. Now, if you were going to tell me last week that, hey, next week in Oakland, Philadelphia's going to score 49 points, like, I don't think so. James off to the sidelines. Third down and three.
Wetter on third down. Goes down back at the 31 yard line on the pressure from Chris Clemens. That may be the first time today that it looked like the noise had an impact on Tampa Bay's offense. They were late getting out of the huddle. Then when they got to the line of scrimmage, late getting the signals called for the protection. And you could just tell that something bad was potentially going to happen. Michael Bennett just drives DeMar Dodson right back into the lap of Mike Lennon. Uh, Bennett and Clemens. And I to take down Glennon. And now Caden's punt. Out of bounds. At the 25-yard line. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. By Bud Light, official peer sponsor of the NFL. And by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Seahawks with seven wins. 49ers and Saints six apiece. San Francisco off today. New Orleans losing earlier to the Jets. And we know how important home field advantage is in the playoffs. Teams will not want to come up here and play in Seattle. It's critical in the NFC. Seattle, New Orleans, two of the more difficult places to play. A tremendous home field advantage. That's why this game is so critical. And, and I'm so impressed with Seattle being able to weather the storm with these injuries and find ways to win. If the Seahawks can come back and win, they would open up a two-game lead in the win column over those two teams we just mentioned into Buccaneers territory. Doug Baldwin Wilson took a shot complete to Baldwin who gains 28. I got the pressure right up in the face on a delayed blitz here. There he comes right there. But he stays in the pocket, Darrell. Confident, eyes downfield, eyes on his receiver, makes a wonderful throw downfield. Adrian Claiborne Ooh. with the hit on Wilson and the 28-yard reception, biggest offensive play for the Seahawks today. From the Tampa Bay 47, Wilson handing it off to Lynch. Stays on his feet initially, but then it's a keen spitz who wraps him up and throws him backwards. Well, Tampa Bay is lucky right now that Akeem Spence is hustling down the line as he runs off the field right now with an injury as well. But Marshawn Lynch was about ready to bounce off of three guys and cut back to the open side of the field. And if Akeem Spence hadn't been coming down the line of scrimmage, I think that's another big play right after the long catch. So Spence in pain, replaced by Gary Gibson. Second down at 12. Wilson over the top to Lynch. Lynch inside the 40. So the Seahawks now facing third down and two. I tell you, that's a, a great way to get the ball to Lynch. Watch him here at the end, how he just keeps driving with his legs, stays nice and low, but gang tackling will slow that down we talked about that earlier good job by dakota watson tony matching him getting his pads down that's that's pretty good in the open field against a very strong runner seahawks must get to the 37. wilson to the outside and the catch is made by baldwin on terrell Rebus. seahawks first down i think that's the first time they've actually thrown towards terrell Rebus. Baldwin's going to be in the back of that stack. Rebus and Richard Sherman in the news once again this week. The social media war last season. Sherman claiming that he is the best quarterback in the NFL. They set it down for the Seahawks. This is Turbin. Turbin inside the 30. Mark Barron makes yet... Another tackle, a gain of five for Robert Turbin. Uh, Mark Barron has played well. The interception on that opening drive by Seattle and a lot of really nice tackles coming up in run support from his safety spot. Buccaneers looking for their first win. Seahawks at 7-1. Best start in franchise history. Tampa Bay led 21-0. Seahawks have never come back from a deficit of more than 20 in franchise history. 
Wilson's pass is intended for Marshawn Lynch. Third down at five. A 20-point comeback by the Seahawks against John Elway and the Broncos back in 95. John Fries threw the game-winning touchdown pass to Chris Warren. 609 games in franchise history. They have never come back from a deficit of more than 20. Wilson to Curse. Jermaine Curse makes the catch at the Buccaneers' three-yard line. It's a nice job by Jermaine Curse of being able to locate this ball. Michael Adams is in decent position in his coverage. It's underthrown, and those are some of the hardest ones to defend, the underthrown vertical routes, because there's such an advantage to the receiver. Michael Adams is late getting his head around to locate the ball. Jermaine Curse is not. First and goal from the Tampa Bay three. Wilson to the end zone, and it is picked off by Keith Tandy. Second Tampa Bay interception, the first of Tandy's career, and there is a flag at the end of the play. Oh, how can you do that? I mean, the crowd is calling for the Beast to get the football. And you had it against St. Louis on one of their drives inside the five. Marshawn Lynch doesn't get a touch. He didn't get a touch in the game previously against Arizona. After the interception, personal foul, face mask. Offense, number three, 15 yards, the dead ball spot. First down, timeout. What a turn of events here in Seattle. First and goal from the three, and Keith Tandy comes up with his first career pick. Keith Tandy, second year safety out of West Virginia, starting for the injury to Sean Goldson, comes up with the interception. Face match called at the end of the play to the Bucks start at their own 21-yard line as Glennon hands it off to Mike James, who gains three. This is a very athletic play by Keith Tandy, and you're going to see Doug Baldwin out here. It, it looks as though he's going to be open as he comes in on that slant. There, watch 37. Eye in the quarterback, reads his eyes, goes up, one-handed, pulls it down. Yeah, Russell Wilson can't see him behind that offensive line. The big question is, why don't you feed the beast inside the farm? There you go. First time the Seahawks have turned the ball over three times all season. One of the three coming on special teams. Second down and seven. Lennon's pass is caught by Vincent Jackson. He's had a quiet day, only his second reception. Under seven minutes remaining. Third down and two, and the Buccaneers, eight for 12 on third down today. Huge one coming up here. it back to Seattle. That's why it was so important for Tampa Bay to run the football effectively today. The coverage is very good across the board. There's Brandon Browner, stride for stride, back and forth. Now go to the bottom of your screen. You got Richard Sherman working the slot against Vincent Jackson. Walter Thurman working on Sky Dawson. Nowhere for Mike Glennon to go. First time the Buccaneers have gone three and out today. Kanan, punting, Tate, back deep, angled out of bounds, not giving Tate a chance, had a 71-yard return earlier. So it's 6-13 remaining in the fourth. Another chance for the 7-1 Seahawks to trail by seven. Today's game is sponsored by the new Windows. 
Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa back in Seattle, number 61. Lemuel Jean-Pierre now in its center for Max Unger for the Seahawks, who start in terrific field position from their own 41. Trailing by seven. Now they give it to Marshawn Lynch. And he gains three down to the 44. So the Tampa Bay Bucks, who have not had much go right for them this season, on the road, tough place to play, seven-point lead. Can they finally get over the hump and learn how to win a football game? Tough losses against the Jets and the Saints to start the season. And who knows what direction the season goes after that point if they find a way to do it. This would be devastating for Tampa Bay to lose this game. Black Soccer, the center, out with a concussion. Here's Lynch to the 48. The third down and three. Upcoming for the Seahawks, who have the best record in the NFC. They've lost a number of key players. Sidney Rice on IR. Two tackles are out. Lynch shaken up earlier, and now their center, Max Unger. Percy Harvin, you know, it just the, the list is unbelievable here, and yet here they are. It's 7-1, and one, down 21 in this game, and I tell you, this would be a huge boost for Seattle to get to 8-1 and one with all the adversity. On third and three, it is Lynch, and he fights forward and looks to have a first down. You're on That's one leg ever. with your shoulders turned, and you're leaning forward, and you... And they still can't knock you back, Tony. I mean, I don't, I don't know how this guy generates the leverage he does. He, he has got to be one of the strongest guys I've seen at the point of the tackle. I mean, look, he just got this great balance and just continuing to fall forward. You know, I went against a lot of good running backs and strong running backs, but I'll tell you what, Marshawn Lynch, I would hate to have to go and arm tackle this guy, just the way he drives with his legs and his strength. You talk about all the time how low he is to the ground. Solid runner. From the 48, on first down, play action. Wilson throws, and the catch is made by Miller. Zach Miller takes it to the Buccaneers, 26, a 22-yard completion. Thrown on a run once again. Oh, and you got Marshawn Lynch, and you can do that play action. Not only a good runner, but there, as you can see him in blitz pickup. And again, you know, Coach Shiano talked about the ability of Russell Wilson to throw on the run, and we've seen a couple of examples today. Wilson also taken down by Claiborne after he got rid of the football. Now Turbin. Not much. Mark Barron, I'll tell you, this guy is all over the field. He hits like a, a defensive lineman, Darrell. I was going to say a fullback, but a defensive lineman. He, he's he's had an outstanding game today. He really, I mean, from the very very start, that interception on the opening drive yeah. on the red zone fringe, and then just you know, just the way he's tackled, he's bringing a physical presence. I mean, he closes. The speed is unbelievable. Second and ten. Wilson in trouble, able to get rid of it. The catch is made by Golden Tate, and he takes it down to the 18-yard line of the box before he was tackled by Derek Landry, gate of eight. You have Daniel Tay and Asim right in your face. Number 50 plays it perfect. Up the field, does his responsibility. You know, that just chalked that one up to Russell Wilson and Golden Tate. I mean, you do everything right and they still make a completion. Third down and two from the Bucks 18. First in motion. The toss to Lynch. And Marshawn Lynch has another Seahawks first down with 2.29 remaining. And Seattle trailing by seven. Now, I don't think during the course of the game that we ever saw, you know, kind of a lack of confidence from Seattle. You're sitting there at 21-0 in the second quarter, late second quarter, coming into halftime, and we never really saw them flinch. And that, that's huge. That's huge that you have that amount of confidence in your team that when you're not playing your best football, that you still know you're going to have an opportunity to win it at the end. Seahawks with a huge touchdown towards the end of the first half. After falling behind, 21-0. Here's Wilson after the fake to Lynch. And it's Levante David who brings him down at the 12-yard line. Uh, I tell you what, watching him on film getting ready for this game, Levante David, one of the really good linebackers in this league, in everything, in coverage, you know, tackling, as a blitzer, very, very impressed watching Levante David on film. 
have had a terrific season by the Bucs and tackles as a rookie last year. Seahawks get the snap off prior to the two-minute warning. Not sure why they rushed it. Because they are now facing a third down and five with Greg Seattle's Bucks leading by seven. Coach Ciano getting his guys together. They had a great week of practice. Butch Davis told me Wednesday and Thursday, the two best practices of the year. They're executing the game plan to near perfection. They've gotten out to a 21-point lead, just encouraging his guys to hang on. Let's finally finish this game. And who knows what happens the rest of the season for the Bucs. You have to give Tampa Bay so much credit, no matter what the end result is today. Third down and five. Seahawks must get to the six for a first down. Touchdown, Doug Baldwin. They talked about getting pressure right into Russell Wilson's oh, face. They have a couple times today, but he has stood in that pocket and delivered some strikes. I don't know how he got that ball off. Standing down here right behind the defense, I couldn't even see Russell Wilson. We are tied at 24. Second touchdown pass of the day for Wilson. Also... Ran in for one. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks have tied the game. A 10-play, 59-yard drive. For Zach Miller, 22-yard reception, the key play. So the Seahawks, who trail 21-0, have come back to tie the score at 24. Eric Page on the run. Page out to the 28-yard line. So Mike Glennon and the Buccaneers offense with a minute 45 on the clock and two timeouts. They lost a timeout of that unsuccessful challenge earlier. That's what you wanted from Mike Glennon today. I like the attempts down to 20. You're able to do that because Mike James has had a career day running the football. The offensive line has been great, but guess what, guys? You got to shift out of your comfort zone right now. You can't play the game plan you played today. You got to get aggressive down the field here. Can that offensive line hold up in protection? Bucks need to go approximately 35 yards to get it to field goal range for Lindell. They've punted on their last three possessions. Out of the 33-yard line, the catch is made by Tim Wright for a gain of five. Glennon picks up a first down out to the 43-yard line. Gain of 10 for Glennon. Clock continues to run. Tampa Bay with two timeouts. One minute remaining. Glennon under pressure on first down, throws it away. Another smart decision by the rookie quarterback. Yeah, he's made great decisions all day long today. Not trying to do too much when the play breaks down. Take the smart way out. We've seen that several times today. Get beyond the pocket and just get that ball at or beyond the line of scrimmage. Got to talk to Ryan Lindell, the kicker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He felt confident at 53 yards going in that direction that they would be kicking the ball. So You see his season long and his career long. They would need to get to the 35 for a 53-yard attempt. That's 22 yards from where the Buccaneers are right now. Catch is made by James. And Mike James, who has gained 156 yards on the ground, makes it out to the 46. Gain of just three. Third down and seven.
Justin Jackson going to the top against Brandon Brown or one on one. Jackson with only two receptions today. Glennon looking his way. Now he runs. He knows where the first down marker is, and he is stopped. Hit at midfield, three yards shy of a first. Surprise Seattle letting time come off this clock. You think they'd call that timeout? Golden Tate's already brought one back a good distance, 71 yards earlier. Boy, they let a lot of time come off that clock. And now with 20 seconds timeout. remaining, Seattle Seahawks use their first timeout. Greg Seattle leaving his offense on the field. It is fourth down and three. Obviously a gamble because if you do not pick up the first, you give Seattle a short field with two timeouts. Regardless of the decision by Coach Ciano, Coach Carroll should have called the timeout immediately after third down to save time. I don't like this decision right here. Your team has fought hard all day long. I say you punt the ball and play for overtime and take your chances there. A lot of things that can go wrong with this. The noise in this stadium with the communication on this offense. Clock at two. And now, Clark runs all the way down. Clark's take a play again. Penalty. They were trying to draw the Seahawks offside, and now they'll punt it away. Yeah, good discipline by the Seattle defense, understanding the down and distance right there. You're inside five yards. They didn't buy into anything. I don't think they're going to hurt him anyway. You know, Mike Lennon trying to. They have some kind of a hard count to that defense. I mean, you just got to keep your eye on the ball like they've been doing all game when this crowd gets all wild up like they have been. I really think the big mistake came from Seattle and not getting that time in, that timeout yes. called immediately after third down to save some time. So here's Golden Tate back deep. They've kept it away from Tate. Last couple of punts. 71-yard return earlier. End over end kick. Taken on the run by Tate from the 20. Out to the 32 yard line. It was a 21 7 Buccaneers lead at the half. Russell Wilson, 10 yard touchdown run, cutting the Bucks' lead to 10. And then Heath Tandy with a big pick in the red zone. Wilson to Baldwin, tying the game at 24. 11-0 at home in the NFL, and he also won his last 10 home games in college at North Carolina State and Wisconsin. So Wilson with 21 consecutive home wins. The Seahawks franchise record is 12 straight. So Seattle with two timeouts, only 16 seconds on the clock, will start from their own 33-yard line. They need to get... To the Bucks, 33, about 34 yards to get him to field goal range. Here's Lynch on a screen, and Lynch is out to the 38 with time winding down. That's just a great job. He's he's been outstanding all afternoon. Mark Barron plays off the block on the screen and helps out on the tackle. He's had an he's had an outstanding afternoon. So we are headed to overtime. Here in Seattle, the 7-1 Seahawks, the 0-7 Bucks. Only two times in history has a team with no wins after at least seven games beat a team with only one loss or no loss. This hasn't happened since 1975. And the Buccaneers took a 21-point lead today, 21-0. Seahawks have battled back to tie the game. Russell Wilson with a couple of touchdown passes and a touchdown run for Seattle. Seahawks' first ever 7-1 start. To break the tie, there will be one sudden death overtime period with one exception. If the receiving team scores a field goal, the kicking team will have an opportunity to possess. 
fourth quarter rules are in effect. His team has two timeouts. Replay is controlled by the replay official upstairs. What's your choice? That's heads, and that's tails. Heads, I'll let it hit the ground. Heads he calls, heads it is. The ball, it's going to kick that way. All right. Tampa Bay has won the toss. They will receive. So the Buccaneers will get the ball first in overtime here in Seattle. Coming into play today, including the Thursday night game, Cincinnati over Miami, home team three and two. Redskins won an overtime earlier today over the Chargers. Buccaneers get the ball first. If they score a touchdown on this possession, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, then the Seahawks would have an opportunity. Does he have one more drive left in him? Mike Glennon has been outstanding today. The whole offense, the game plan put together by Coach Ciano and his staff to come out here in this environment at 0-7. They started off with a great week of preparation, and they come out and they execute that game plan. Mike Glennon has been poised all afternoon. Does he have one more drive in him? In the second quarter, Buccaneers scored touchdowns on three straight possessions. Kicked a field goal early in the third, but have punted the last four times they've had the football. Four receivers on the field for Tampa Bay. Sky Dawson lined up in the backfield. Glennon. On the first play of overtime, out of bounds at the 21. Good decision once again, gain of just one. But stays away from a negative play. A little bit better mobility for a 6'6 guy than you'd expect. And it was one of the things that was kind of a knock on him coming out of college. And you know, I haven't seen that today. Coach Sullivan, the offensive coordinator for Tampa Bay, told us the same thing. You know, he's a lot more mobile than people give him credit for. We've seen that this afternoon. Got to get Mike James back involved in this game. Here's James, who has 156 yards on the ground. And he's bottled up after a gain of just two. Cam Chancellor makes the tackle. So it is now third down and seven. Early in overtime, tied at 24. Buccaneers 0 for their last five on third down after the great start. They must get to the 30. Glennon escapes. Now he's down. Back to the 16-yard line. This is what the ability to do when you can play man-to-man -man across the board does for your defensive front. They're just locking everybody down in the bunch. And here comes that defensive line. Fifth sack of the season for Cliff Averill, the ex-Lion. Keenan waiting, back at his two-yard line. Golden Tate, 71-yard return earlier. Tate moving to his left, takes it at the 32. Across the 40. So, terrific field position for the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson has hung in there all day. He's been roughed up at times, but he just keeps coming back. I tell you, in the second half, Tampa Bay really got after him on the last couple of drives and rushed him up. And been very impressed with Russell Wilson in the pocket, in the face of that pass rush at Tampa Bay, just hanging on, taking some hitch, courage in the pocket, displayed all afternoon for Russell Wilson. Eight career game-winning drives in the fourth quarter and overtime. Two touchdown passes today. One touchdown run for Russell Wilson. Short field for the Seahawks. Start from the 40. On first down, it's Marshawn Lynch. Lynch to midfield.
Gerald McCoy shake it up. You know that they're going to feed Marshawn Lynch here in overtime, and to be able to rip off a run that's enough to get you a first down on that first carry. Not just run, get him the ball in open space on that second level, because those DBs do not want to see him in there, back there. Gerald McCoy's down on the field. Had some cramp issues earlier in the game, but this likes, not sure, this looks like it might be more than just a cramp. McCoy, a pro bowler last season. Former first round pick out of Oklahoma. It's headed to by the Buccaneers medical staff. Bucks without Gerald McCoy, replaced by Derek Landry. First and ten from midfield for the Seahawks. Buccaneers have already had a possession here in overtime as Lynch gains three down to the 47. There's been confidence building for Seattle the entire second half here, and, and it always felt like Tampa Bay was was kind of hanging on. Is, is Seattle going to step forward right now in this first opportunity in overtime with their possession and go down the field and get that field goal to, to put this game away? L.A., L.A., L.A. Yes, sir. Wilson on second and seven. And the pass is caught by Baldwin. For a Seahawks first down, Jonathan Banks makes the tackle, a gain of 10 for Doug Baldwin. Off coverage here. Ball delivered on time. Not enough for Jonathan Banks to get back up and make a play on it. A step away on the blitz by Mark Barron and a step away by Jonathan Banks in coverage. On the 37-yard line, it's Lynch. Down to the 33. So the Seahawks are in field goal range. Houska's season long is 51. Real long, 54. If the Seahawks do not gain another yard, this would be a 51-yard attempt. In the battle of the two 1976 expansion teams, Seahawks and Buccaneers, in overtime. Here's Lynch. Eric Landry wraps him up from behind, makes the tackle. So it is now third down and six for Seattle. Greg Giano's Bucks winless on the season. Bucks have not started 0 8 since. 1985. Check out all the highlights tonight on Fox Sports Live. Exciting day of football around the National Football League. Third down and six. Here's Lynch. And he picks up a first down inside the 20. To the 19, Marshawn Lynch gaining 14 yards. You know who they're going to give it to, but sometimes you can't stop it. Here's Marshawn Lynch. You got a little cross up in the backfield. Your tight end pulling across in motion, but. So Lynch goes over 100 for the 18th time the last 34 games. Man, man, man. From the 19, it's Lynch again. Lynch inside the 10, down to the 6. Well, this is what you thought they should have done earlier, Now is run Marshawn Lynch more, and that's exactly the dosage that they're going to get here in overtime. Yeah, you see that, you know, right around 6 yards a carry. Been very impressive today. At what point do you think about setting out the field goal unit, or do you just go for the touchdown? I mean, the way Marshawn Lynch is running, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, you're always worried about turnovers in this situation, but you can't live your life worried about worst-case scenarios. Now a timeout is taken by 
Tampa Bay. Timeout. Tampa Bay. Seahawks are ready with an overtime win to their credit. Week four in Houston on a Hauschka field goal. A lot of people talk about getting that ball into the middle of the field in these situations. When you get down close to the end zone, that could be a thought process for Coach Carroll. Three Seattle turnovers. Seahawks have never come back to win after trailing by as many as 21. Buccaneers had a 21-0 lead. They've scored a season-high 24 points. Mike James, 158 yards on the ground for the Bucs. Marshawn Lynch, 125 on the ground for the Seahawks. Both teams talked about reestablishing the run game, and both certainly have. Hold on, hold on. Seahawks have never started a season 8-1. Wilson moves it to the middle of the field, as she just mentioned. And then the ball is stripped by Tandy, but Wilson was, was ruled down. Boy, you're talking about a, a dangerous play. That was close. Well, he had given himself up. Yep. Signal to the official, gave himself up. And then Tandy continued to compete. So now, Pete Carroll does not want to take any more chances. He sends out the field goal unit. The holder, Ryan, will set up at the 17-yard line. So this is a 27-yard attempt. Stephen Hauschka. And Hauschka's kick is straight through. Biggest come from the high victory in Seattle Seahawks franchise history. They win their 12th consecutive game at home, tying a franchise record. First 8-1 and one start for the Seahawks. Tough luck loss for Mike Lennon and the Bucs, who dropped to 0-8. We will return to Seattle in a moment.